Hi, my name is Katie McKenzie, and I'm presenting the results from a genome-wide association study of red blood cell fatty acids in the Framingham Heart Study. I worked with a number of collaborators and under the advisement of Dr. Nathan Tintel. So I'm going to first start off by giving a brief overview of relevant background information, such as DNA and fatty acids. I'm then going to describe the goal of our study and the results of a previous study done by Dr. Tintel, and then finally conclude with the results of our follow-up study of an improved process of analyzing sequence data. So to begin with, just a quick background about DNA. DNA contains the genetic blueprint for an individual, and each person has a sequence of around 3 billion nucleotides, and these nucleotides are called A, C, T, and G. And so each person has a different genetic blueprint, but everyone has the same number of chromosomes for the most part, and um, the same number of genes and types of genes. So the human DNA is organized into 23 pairs of chromosomes, and these are just continuous strands of DNA. And you get one chromosome from mom and one from dad. So currently, the cost of obtaining genetic information has gone down significantly. So you can now sequence your entire gene, your DNA for just under $1,000 and compared to nearly $61 million in 2002, it's gone down exponentially. And so this has resulted in a lot more genetic data, which kind of causes some issues on from the statistical standpoint because you need to learn how to use all of this data in your analyses. So what we look at are single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs and this is when a single spot in the genome varies in at least one percent of individuals. So if you can see in the diagram on the right, for the most part everyone has the same sequence code except there are random spots in the genome where you will get one nucleotide that's different and that is called a SNP. And SNPs are important because they underlie differences in human susceptibility to disease, the severity of disease, and response to disease or treatment. So it's obviously very useful to try to understand which SNPs are correlated which, with which diseases so that we can better understand diseases and help individuals with those diseases obtain appropriate treatment. Additionally, there are a lot of types of fatty acids in our bodies, and I'm sure you've heard of saturated and un unsaturated and monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids. But basically, all of these fatty acids in our body um, are present from the food we eat and just there naturally. And these fatty acid effects include adjusting your cholesterol levels, both LDL and HDL, and LDL is just what's known as bad cholesterol, and HDL is good cholesterol. And they also interfere with omega-3 fatty acid modification, so that's when one fatty acid is converted into another. And they also play a major role in cardiovascular disease risk. And studies have shown that the effects of fatty acids are due to fatty acid type and amount, where type is the more significant factor. So our overall goal for our study was to kind of look at the GWAS in a different way. So there's been a lot of research that attempts to find SNPs correlated with cardiovascular diseases, such as heart attacks. However, in this GWAS, we attempted to find SNPs correlated with the type and amount of red blood cell fatty acids. This is unique and important because it is thought that these fatty acids may encode more information about specific cardiovascular diseases. So as you can see on the top, line going from purple to orange, that's the standard GWAS, whereas we are going from purple to green, then to orange. So uh, as our goal was to identify these factors that contribute to cardiovascular disease, we needed a data set that contained fatty acid levels, genotypes, and other covariates for the subjects. Luckily, we were able to use the Framingham data set. 
And the Framingham data set is a longitudinal study, meaning that data is gathered over a large period of time. And for this specific data set, it began in 1948 and data is collected every two years. So the individuals in Framingham, Massachusetts have agreed to have their DNA sequenced and go in for these tests. And um, this will allow us to ad identify these factors that contribute to cardiovascular disease. So previous work done by Dr. Tintel was he used the Framingham Heart Offspring Study to examine correlation between red blood cell fatty acids and SNPs. And he analyzed 14 fatty acids with 2.5 million SNPs using this linear mixed model where fatty acid was predicted by SNP, age, sex, and kinship. And kinship was necess is necessary in the model due to the, um, due to just the, like genetic architecture within the Framingham data set as most of these individuals um, have ancestors and like parents and grandparents that have been part of this study. And they found 191 significant SNPs from seven different genes. So what we did was we took the same model, but we added in a dietary covariate eight new fatty acids and 14 fatty acid ratios. So the thinking is that there's two significant groups in the Framingham data set, which are the Italians and the Irish. And just inherently within those ethnicities, there may be variances in the diet. And so we believe that the um, that the fatty acid levels may be better predicted by adding in the dietary covariate. So, um, because your SNPs may influence your diet. SNPs meaning your ethnicity may influence your diet, which will influence your fatty acid levels. And we also use gene-based testing as a new method, such as the Gates test. This is a table of results for the fatty acids. And, um, there's a lot going on in this table, but basically what happened was we didn't find very many new significant hits, but we replicated most of our findings. And here are some the results of fatty acid ratios. And this is where we found a lot of new um, results. So in the lightly colored purple boxes, those are the ones where the fatty acid ratios came back significant when using gene-based testing. And here's another slide that shows another significant finding. So with the new fed with the new GWAS that encoded dietary covariates, we re replicated most of the previous findings, and we identified a few new locations, um, specifically with respect to um, the fatty acid ratios. And we found that gene-based testing has advantages over the standard approaches, um, specifically with respect to the fatty acid ratios, and we were better able to. Um, find significant chromosomes where and steps where these fatty acid ratios are encoded. And here's a list of all contributing authors that helped with this study. Here are acknowledgments and references. Thank you so much for watching, and I would love to answer any questions you might have. Thanks.